Hey, everybody. Thank you for that, Corey. You know what? I had it on mute like an idiot. <laughs> I'm a noob. Um, so let me start over. So we have Plan B. Plan B is known, you know, known as a, uh, a technical analyst, like one of the best, had a, had a model that was working for a while and then it failed. They all do that. So we shouldn't be cringing. Um, something that caught my attention is that Plan B is like, yeah, you know, I, th I think Bitcoin's going to hit like 200 grand. Um, and the floor is probably 60. Now, I had said, you know, a while ago that I definitely think that we're not going to see, you know, 35 anymore. And then recently, I think a couple of weeks ago, I said, I don't think we're going to see 50 and 55 again. And listening to looking at everything and listening to how it's going on, I'm kind of I can I can probably buy into what Plan B is saying with regard to, yeah, we're probably not going to see $60,000 Bitcoin anymore. I can I think I can I think I can agree to that one right um, something else that caught my attention is there is a report by coin ledger that says that over just just this year just this year 2024 the bulk of the uh, addresses out there on average two thousand dollar increase right and that's because of the Bitcoin search so what they're thinking is, is that, hey, you've got a lot of things going on and Bitcoin is actually moving in the direction you want it to move in. And so kind of to be expected. I agree. I mean, Bitcoin's up over 50 percent. Right. Then you have, you know, if you're whole, if you were holding Bitcoin, your portfolio probably saw some upward momentum, which is good. Dominic, is that Loro? Dominic Loro, how are you? Um, don't forget to join, but do not forget to join. Um, also, you know, if you're new, it would be nice if you told me where you're from. Um, it, we seem to be really international. Like I get up at like four o'clock, three thirty and three thirty a.m., four o'clock in the morning, my time in New York. Um, but I, so I time everything according to my day. I was gently told. <laughs> Gently told by a friend of mine, Peter, who said, uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't freaking name your shows by the time of day, you nimrod. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, and I, I couldn't say anything because he was right. He was right. I had I have to actually say Canada. What's up? Um, I have to kind of name my shows in a more generic kind of way. Right. So we, you know, we, we had, you know, uh, what was it? Friday, the nighttime, something or other, whatever, whatever. So now that became crypto overflow. So it it it's just, <clears throat> excuse me, because it's international, and I never thought about that. It's it's a big deal. Um, Elix Skipper, what's up from Georgia or in Georgia? Thank you for joining. Um, what else do we have? Stablecoin developments. So looking at PayPal, PayPal is saying, hey, look, listen, we're going to make it easier for you to flip from PayPal USD, you know, pay USD to, you know, fiat for cross border transactions. And, and we're going to do that by not charging you fees. That's actually a very big deal. And I don't know if you guys paid attention a while ago. I had said that, you know, on PayPal, you can purchase certain crypto. I think it's like Ethereum, Bitcoin. I know Bitcoin for sure. I don't do anything there with that kind of stuff because they handcuff you. You can what I I don't I call it not buying crypto. I call it earmarking crypto. And the reason why is because you can't move it. So on Cash App, I can buy Bitcoin, but I'm not and I can take that Bitcoin and send it to another wallet off of Cash App. Can't do that on PayPal. So I call it earmarking. If I can't, if it's not, if it's on, if it's someplace and I don't control the keys, not my keys, not my crypto, you're just earmarking it for me. I didn't actually buy it. I bought an earmark. That's it. So, but they're going to make their cross-border transactions, a, you know, a big deal. That's what they've always been shooting for is to make cross-border transactions a thing, right? Because that's where they see their future. And I can't really disagree with that. Like, I seriously can't disagree with that. PayPal is also a service, and I don't know if you caught my show yesterday, but if you look at yesterday's video, I was talking about um, this cattle company known for the Wagyu. They said they got hosed by by PayPal, and that's why they're, you know, accepting and accepting treasuries with uh, 
with Bitcoin. And I just said, wow. And it's not the first time that I've heard that PayPal has had issues with with funds with certain businesses. Anyway, that's a big deal. Something else that's a big deal in that stablecoin space is the idea that XRP, not XRP, my apologies, Ripple is going to offer their own stablecoin. If Ripple offers their own stablecoin, you best believe it's going to it's going to hit high on the market cap list, like mega high, mega, mega, mega high, right? So we're talking about there are other stable coins out there. I think the, the only one that could possibly, not even possibly, like by far, obviously it's going to be Tether and then everybody else. Tether's just got, got, that, got that kind of market cap. So I think after that could actually wind up being if XRP comes out, if Ripple comes out with their own stable coin, you're looking at competition between Ripple and Circle, right? Like, I like competition. That's a good thing. So that's one of the things I'm looking at. If you have questions, don't forget to drop them in there. I ha I'm live, so take advantage. Um, here's something that I do want to say from an administrative pr perspective. If I go live on the first show, it doesn't matter. That's open to the public. My later show, Crypto Overflow, where we really dig into different topics, that one's going to be for members only. So I do beg you, please go ahead and join. It's good stuff. I give some really good information, or so I've been told. Um, we also have a website, gormybag.tv, that we're growing into be its own, um, its own social media platform. And guess what? We just signed a deal or we're about to finish off the deal with the Small Business Development Corporation in the United States, um, specifically New York, to host some of their classes. Because we're not just talking about growing your bag from a personal perspective, but a lot of you are small business owners and we wanna help there as well. Anyway, back to the news. So looking at regulation, because I'm reading my notes, you know me, I always have my notes in front of me. Um, looking, at, looking at regulation, the European, what is it? The European Securities and Markets Authority flags max, maximum extractable value, MEV, um, as potential form of market, market abuse in the crypto space. So that's got everybody in the crypto space scratching their heads like, okay, how does that affect us? Again, maximum extractable value. What do you mean? Can you please clarify? Because under MICA, they're saying that this could be seen as an abuse and punishable. And I'm just sitting back and I'm kind of going, um, punishable how, punishable by who, and for what? Can you please be a little bit more specific? Like, are you talking about manipulation? And I think it comes down to changing the order of the blocks within a blockchain. So I want to understand, like, what do you mean, right? That's that's all I want to know is what do you mean? Because once it's written, you know, just like the just like the movie, so shall it be written, so shall it be done. So I want to understand. I have to dig into that rule a little bit more. But that sends shockwaves through everybody. Something else. The Philippines is going after eToro. The Philippines is like, yeah, eToro, we don't like what you're doing. We don't like how you're doing it, and we're basically going to go after you because. We don't think you're operating legally. That's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. eToro is not a small company. I mean, it's smaller than Binance and Coinbase and a few others, but you know, it's a name that that's well known in the space. So I'm definitely going to be watching that. The reason why is because now you have Binance obviously having issues in Nigeria, and Nigeria saying that there's you know this whole money laundering thing. And what's hilarious is they're going after a guy who's well known to be going after, you know, terrorist money and anti and doing anti money laundering stuff. That's the guy that they're holding in Nigeria. Wait, this guy built his whole reputation helping companies and the United States go after this kind of stuff and that's the guy you choose to hold? I said it yesterday, I'll say it again today and I'll say it probably until this whole thing is over. What's going on in Nigeria does not smell right. There's something going on over there. Now, back to here, you have JP Morgan is optimistic that Ethereum is not gonna be found to be a security. 
I'm sitting back and I'm saying, I would just like to understand how it could be found a security. Because I'm in the boat of, yeah, no, I don't think it's a security. But how could the how could the SEC think it's a security? Did they just yank that out of the sky? Try to find a reason? Right? Wouldn't be the first time. Or is it there's something that they're saying that is a valid point that it's not a security or that it is a security? I need to know that because I'm with JP Morgan. I don't I don't see it as a security, especially now. Maybe when it first started, possibly, but right now, I don't think so. Right now, I do not think so. And one of the reasons why is because it's so decentralized, unlike Solana, which is not so decentralized. Right? Solana's been having issues. They've been having congestion issues. All of those meme coins and everything else that's going on on there, they're having a hard time. So if they're having a hard time looking because I just want to make sure that I capture any questions or anything else like that. But if Solana's having such a hard time handling, you know, the, the traffic that's brought on by memes, people couldn't do transactions. So it wasn't an outage. They didn't go down. It was just mad slow. If Solana can't handle the traffic, that's going to be a problem for them. I, and I noted this, I think last week I had said, you know, congestion for meme coins is going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem because you're not really transacting with memes. People are investing in memes, gathering memes, and then selling them when they think they can make money and then buying them back when, you know, high, low, high, low, right? But those aren't those aren't real transactions. I mean, they're real transactions, but it's not like I went to a store and I whipped out, you know, this coin and I paid for whatever it is that I was paying for. Like one of my guys on my team is taking his car in for service today. He, you know, if, if he walks in the door, he pays with Solana, he pays with whatever, and he walks out the door. To me, that's a real transaction. That's a real use case happening in the real world. Purchasing and selling me memes is not real. Right. So you have all of this BS traffic going on and you're going to experience you're going to experience that problem. And I'm just wondering when when are people going to catch up to that? Because one of the things that Cardano is saying, good morning, Stephen Palmer. Good morning. Where are you from? That's the rule. If you hop on, I would like to know where you're from because we're we're getting we're getting a lot of international people. Somebody was on from Laos the other night, you know. So I I just like to know. I I just really like to know. Um, but looking at this, I'm sitting back and I'm going, okay. So so Solana could have, well, does have networking issues, right? It has you know capacity issues. So Cardano doesn't. And so Charles Hoskinson is like, yeah, they had problems. We wouldn't have. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's 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 throwing shade just a little bit, it's throwing some shade. Um, oh, you're from the U.S. What's up? Interesting. Are you from the East Coast or West Coast? I'm on the East Coast. I'm up kind of early. I know you can't you can't possibly be from the West Coast. That's that's maybe middle America. West Coast, though, three hours. Ugh, that would be ugly. That's that's the time that I get up in on the East Coast. I get up at like three thirty, four o'clock in the morning. That's when I'm starting my day. Um, and we've got a lot going on. I can't wait to tell you about it. A couple of minutes. I'll tell you about what we really have going on. It's freaking awesome. Um we are actually, I'll just tell you now, we are actually testing out our class platform right now. So, you know, I came out with the book, right? And the book is not a standalone thing. There's a class that goes along with it. And we're hosting the class on our own platform that we built. So we're testing that right now. We'll be testing it for the, like the next, next week or so, um, printing it up, all that kind of stuff. But right now it's looking really, really good because what we want to do is the same way I deliver my, my information to you guys. It's I give you a fact and then I give you my opinion on that fact and then how I think it plays out with all of the other research that I do. That's how I deliver. Others might deliver differently, but that's how I deliver. Anyway, we'll be giving that class There'll be two versions of it, two flavors of it. One will be live and one will be self-paced, right? And here's my little ham. That's Stitch. Um, Stitch, you're going to say hi? No, you're going to sit down? Okay, fine. Um, 
So that's that's what we have going on. But looking at everything that we have going on right now, you know, JP Morgan Chase being optimistic about, you know, Ethereum not being, you know, seen as a uh, a security, I think that's a very big deal. I think the SEC is grasping at straws. With regard to Solana and meme coins, I tell you when it comes to meme coins, I tell you that I, I really try to drive home to you. Please be careful when it comes to meme coins. Be very careful, okay? That's a very big deal. Be careful. There are big swings in memes. You can make big money in memes, but you can lose big money too. So pay attention to the swings. Pay attention to the rhythms, right? On another video, I had told you how I pay attention to the rhythms, how I get used to the rhythms for each separate each separate meme so I can kind of see how it ebbs and flows, right? And then that's how I would time that, sort of like double dutch. This is how I would jump in. Um, so that's, I really want you guys to pay attention to that. Something else that I that I looked at is um, just the the overall idea that you, I've been talking about tokenization for over a year, I think a year and a half ago, I was my first article about my first video about tokenization of real world assets, because a country, I forgot which country it was either Brazil, Argentina, yes, yeah, stitch. Yeah, he wants to get pet. Um, one of the countries in, in South America had done tokenization of assets of, of real estate, actually. And I was consulting at a firm um, and asked them, are they going to get involved because they're REIT. Your real estate investment trust and i had asked them when they're going to get involved and i just said wow uh put some calls get in and out on that coin yeah but you know you don't really have puts and calls right you're buying the coin you're you're selling the coin you're buying the coin you're selling the coin like i'm not gonna i like i wouldn't go that much further but let me finish this thing about tokenization so you have you know really a really big push um in tokenization last week i told you about how Okay, all righty. Um, I told you about how um, BlackRock started a two hundred over two hundred million dollar fund, you know, for tokenization of real world assets. But again, this this started a long time ago. Started a long time ago, and the idea is 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 about comes around to fractionalized ownership. And I had asked this company that I was consulting at, hey, are you guys going to get into this? Because again, they are a real estate investment trust. So if you're a real estate investment trust, how do you feel about fractionalized ownership? Come here. Come here. Up. Come here. Up. No, you just want to. He just wants to be pet. He doesn't even want to hop up because, you know, everybody wants to say hello. Everybody wants to say hello to Stitch. And, you know, he doesn't want to talk to anybody right now. He just wants to get pet. Look at him. He's a big baby. Um, so when I look at that, I'm just like they were like, well, I don't know. Then I started thinking about this and I just said, the tokenization of real world assets, here's the real issue with it. It's a good problem to have in my eyes. You can own something, own a piece of something, get paid the residuals from it, maybe you own a building, you're, you know, fractionalized building, whatever else it is, and then I go and I flip that to somebody else. Or I hit that asset's trading platform and I sell it on the open market. And that ownership is maintained by that platform, right? Oh, there you go. Now you want to say hi. Look at you, you big baby. So I sit there and I'm like, you could do that with, but it's going to change, right? It's going to change or right where it And Hear me, I apologize. Upgrade something when it that how you split up the ownership of real estate. Uh, that's going to be a problem. I'm buffering right now. Good morning, Cortez. Hopefully, it, it, it's come back. I'm waiting because there could be a, a streaming problem right now that this is why I go live because I need to know, you know, what's going on with uh, with the stream. It looks like we've picked back up. I think it was on just my computer restarted. 
everything. So I'm hoping that we can come back to it all. So we'll see. Um, let me know in the notes if it if it really got horrible or if I should kill the stream or anything. But really, tokenization of assets is going to be a big deal. Everybody's calling it RWA or real world assets. And the tokenization of that is a very big deal. Five by five, I'm not understanding. Five by five. I'm missing something. Cortez, let me know what I'm missing. Um, all right, my bit rate, is it better now? I think it's caught up. Anyway, tokenization is gonna be wind up being a big deal. So one of the things that I'm looking at is, thank you, Elix. Um, wherever I'm looking, I'm looking at where there can be disruption because where there's disruption or the potential for disruption is where I believe I'm gonna make the most money. So I'm looking at companies. Morgan told me about Pendle. Pendle's a company that's getting involved in real world assets and tokenization. There are a few of them that are out there. He told me about Pendle yesterday, yesterday or the day before. I think it day be might have been the day before. But that's what I'm looking at, loud and clear. Thank you, Cortez. <laughs> Um, so when I look at all of these different things, I'm not just looking for information about this coin or this coin or that project. I'm looking across the board like HUT8 is actually doing well, right? But that's that's something that's not in the, you know, in the space. It's a miner. So that's their crypto miner and you can buy the stock. So not everything is about buying crypto itself. Sometimes it's about buying stock. And right now, Paraguay is like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't allow miners. Because remember, there are a lot of miners that have left the, not left the United States completely, but have taken um, some, of their, some of their rigs and moved them out of the United States because you know prices are cheaper when it comes to energy. And South America was one place, Africa is another. Um, Radio air traffic control, please, means I hear you loud and clear. Got you. Is that what five by five means? I think that's what you're saying. That's what five by five means. Anyway, I don't want to keep you guys too long, but I wanted to let you guys know, you know, that's what was on my mind when it comes to that. Um, I, I know we normally go through the numbers, so we can actually go through the num go through the numbers. Oh, there's the computer. Uh, just bear with me. I just got to turn this off and turn on this overlay so you can actually see everything. Yeah, I'm live. Um, this, the fear and greed index is back up to 79. I told you it was going to go back up. People are feeling confident, like mad confident about what's going on in the market right now. So I'm expecting more upward momentum. If you look at total value locked, we we're at 119 yesterday. We're at 120 today. So a little less than a one billion dollar move upward. I'm not mad about that. Um, but if you're looking at Bitcoin again, look at this again, you know, my blue band stretches from 57, 686 to 63, 714. Then I have a green band that's starting and its base is at 69, 355. We're operating between the bottom of that and the top of this. And it's a very, very tight space. We were even tighter for a minute, right? For a couple of days, we were trading right here. Now we've expanded and we've gone up. And I told you, because of this contraction right here, I thought we were gonna wind up going up. We did. You could see it. You could see how it was coiled. And you could see like it was gonna spring in a little bit. And it did for a little bit. And then we came back down. I think we're gonna start going up again. I think we're gonna start going up again. And one of the reasons why is because we're 14 days away. I think it's 14 or 15 days away from the halving event. We should be paying attention to this. These are opportunities, right? After the having having event, that's a catalyst, and then we start going. We start seeing things go higher as people start to realize we went from nine hundred Bitcoin being mined every day to four hundred fifty, and there are freaking people out there buying up eight hundred at a clip. Look at Mister One Hundred buying hundreds at a clip. That would that's going to be crazy. Right after the having event, that's going to be crazy. Now you can see everybody that's down. Remember what I told you about meme coins? Look at dog with hat, down big. When it's deep red like that, that means it's down big. W, down big. So I want you guys to pay attention to 
what's going on out there. Now, W is a wormhole. So, you know, W is wormhole and it's, you know, an interoper interoperability platform. But looking at WIF, you can see that big swing. So it's a big swing down right now. So if you're asking me if I would get in at the moment, well, if I had the extra money, yes, I would. I've got extra money, but that's my dry powder that I would use for something else. I'm not getting into that space right now. Doge is down, just flipped down big, down 5%. Yeah, I can see that. What's Doge's, you know, real, real positive in life? It's Elon Musk, not enough for me. So looking at it, for looking at the board, let me get back to the top. There you go. 66, 66, 830. Okay, still sideways. That's what that says to me, still sideways. We're still trading within a very contracted space. So we should be paying attention to what kind of opportunities can come our way, right? Scroll down. I wanted to take a look at. There you go. I wanted to see what Shib was doing. Shib, Shib to me is in a good spot where I could buy in. Avalanche, not so much. I'm kind of leaving leaving what I have there. Bitcoin Cash. I mean, people sleep on Bitcoin Cash. Let's look look at this. 163 percent. It's one of the highest out there. Outside of memes, it's one of the highest out there. I mean, there's Tongue Coin. You guys know I don't I don't muck around with Tongue ton Coin. Um, Shiba Inu's up 159%. People are looking at certain coins and going, oh, they're boring. They're not sexy like meme coins, blah, 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 wah, wah, wah. But these are sure things. Shiba Inu is not a, not a meme coin anymore. It hasn't been in a long time. So I'm looking at things like, yes, I can look at meme coins. That's not an issue. But I can also look at coins that I know are sure footed and I have less risk. It's just like stocks. Yes, I'm going to invest in things that are high risk, but I'm also going to kind of invest in things that are far lower in risk. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. I hope you like what I'm doing. Ooh, I might have missed a lot of people. Hold on a second. Um, Cortez gave me that, gave me the answer. Five by five. I will pay attention to that from now on. Knox Bill, what's up? How are you? Where are you from? The rule is if you're new and I don't know you, I want to know where you're from. It really helps. Stitch is having an issue because my son's going to school right now. Um, in my opinion, what's the optimal amount of Shiba should an investor own? Ooh, you're asking for financial advice, and I'm not allowed to give it because I'm not a financial advisor. Now, for me, <laughs> for me, how much money would I put in the Shiba Inu? I put in, um, at the beginning, I put in about 500. Yeah, I think I put in about $500. When my, when my son first told me about it a long time ago. So that's where we were. Um, how much would I recommend someplace else, um, somebody else? I wouldn't recommend financial advice to somebody else. Am I looking at Shiba Inu right now and thinking this is a good place for me to buy? Um, yeah. For me, it's a good place to buy. And the reason why I think so is because I don't know if you guys realize this, but I also look at really what the all-time high is for a given coin. Right. I didn't open up my spreadsheet today. You know, I really should. You know what? Maybe tonight, maybe tonight I'll open up my spreadsheet. I have an Excel workbook where I, where, um, I have a I have my real one, obviously. But then I have a, a play a for play one where I show people this is how you can track your assets in this workbook. This is the dashboard that it creates. But then you can it also shows you here's some information and data on the assets that you actually want to track. And in one of those columns, you can actually see it's it's you can also see it when I do the um, the uh, 25 up and 25 down. You can actually see the all time highs for each coin. So Shiba Inu is not at its all time high. See where I'm going with that. So I think that when the when the thank you so much, Elix. Um, join, man, join. If you like it, join. It helps me, man. It helps me in a big way. That's my daughter going to work, and <laughs> so he's having attitude problems. Um, Stitch, come. So the idea for me is if it's not hitting its all-time high before the halving event, before everything really starts taking off, to me that there there's an opportunity for me to get in. And Shiba Inu is one of those coins that's on my list of, yeah, I DCA into that, I DCA into Polygon. Um, people laugh at me about DCAing into Polygon. Polygon to me is a part of connective tissue, you know, and the reason why is because some DeFi applications actually leverage Polygon. 
there was a DeFi transaction, a pilot, and I think they've gone beyond pilot now between DBS Bank, JP Morgan. There was another couple of banks that were involved um, and they leveraged Polygon Avalanche Uniswap for that DeFi transaction. That's why I like Polygon. Avalanche, I still like, but if I have a choice between the two, I'm always going to choose Polygon. Um, Uniswap, I like, but there are other things that I would I would get into before Uniswap, but I would get into Uniswap. But I do use the all-time highs right now as a way for me to gauge, is it still a good time for me to get in? Because I think once Bitcoin starts taking off, you're going to see Bitcoin drag everybody with it. Everybody's saying, oh, this is a meme. This is being led by the memes. No. I'm not mucking around with it's being led by the memes. Memes can make you money. Memes can always make you money. But I'm not buying things or or storing my hope in something that's based off of a cute freaking name. Feel me? You've got to show me use case. And Polygon, Avalanche, Uniswap, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Solana. I can I can rattle off you know coin after coin after coin after coin that has proven to me I've got real use case. And those real transactions are happening, which means I have real longevity. What I'm saying to you is, and I want to get into it tonight in tonight's show, is that I think there's going to wind up being a lot of, um, there's going to be a, 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 a lot of coins that are going to fall by the wayside or merging with others. I think that's a, a strong possibility, right? Because they're you know, there's an article that I read and I fully agree with it. There are a lot of stupid doggone meme coins out there and a lot of dumb projects out there that are just going to fall by the way. I know somebody who did a meme, did a meme coin. His meme coin never took off, but he but he's out there with his coin trying to grow traffic. And I'm sitting back and going, what does your coin do that other coins don't already do? What's, what's your thing? It's a cool name. Yeah, nah. <laughs> That's why. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. Don't forget to join. It really helps me and supports the channel. And we've got more things coming. Don't forget about the book. It's on sale on Amazon right now. Crypto Foundations for Building Multi-Generational Wealth. It really does give you the 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 foundational ideas about what crypto is and where it's going. And you need that to start making better decisions as you move forward. Anyway, if you have ideas that I can make this where I can make this better for you, please let me know. I love hearing from you guys. Have a good one. Bye bye.